Hi, my name is Michael and welcome to From the Attic, a channel dedicated to analysis and essays on your favorite video games. Marketing is an often overlooked aspect of games. Most of the time, it's mainly used to advertise, to tell the world that this or that product exists. But when done right, marketing can become an actual part of the experience, part of the content itself, making the consumer active and involved even weeks before the product comes out. One of these products is Death Stranding. If you've been living under a rock for the past year and a half, away from the gaming world, maybe you didn't hear about Death Stranding. This new IP marked the return of the one and only Hideo Kojima, following the whole debacle with Konami and the very unfortunate cancellation of Silent Hills. But the most fascinating thing about that game, for now at least, is that even though it hasn't been released yet, well, it already managed to create its own fan base. Fan art, crazy theories, in-depth analysis of trailers, and even podcasts. And that is interesting, to say the least. Because even though Kojima Productions did show the game through a couple of trailers and a series of fairly enigmatic interviews with Kojima himself, we still have no idea how the game is going to play exactly, or what's even the point of it all. It does look absolutely gorgeous, and a lot of promises were made, but that's not enough, right? Or maybe it is. And before I jump into it, I need to address the elephant in the room. This guy. The fact that Hideo Kojima is behind this game obviously participates to the overwhelming popularity of the game, but I honestly believe that there has to be something more. Because you see, there are a lot of gamers, believe it or not, who've never played a Kojima game. Which means that Kojima Productions have to be doing something right in the way they promote their game. So today we're taking a look at the marketing behind Death Stranding and how it managed to create one of the most interesting buzz in a very long time, showcasing the true power of anticipation. I would say that, generally speaking, video game marketing can be divided into three main philosophies. Quantity-based, quality-based, and secrecy-based. Obviously, there are shades of gray to this, but I feel like these three categories represent fairly well the three main general attitudes publishers can have towards marketing. With that being said, let's look at the first one, quantity-based. Here you can find all your biggest publishers in your annualized AAA franchises. Ubisoft has to be the prime example of quantity-based marketing. Their philosophy can be very easily defined by a strong desire to keep the product in the consumer's mind by any means unimaginable. And to do so, they have to use every strategy at their disposal. It usually starts with video game conventions, such as E3, which is probably the biggest video game event in the world, Gamescom, Paris Games Weeks, PAX, you name it, they attend it. These events are undeniably great at cultivating hype. They give publishers the ultimate platform to reveal their games in a very grandiose fashion, with lights and music and all the other nonsense that can sometimes come with these big events. The people at Ubisoft are the kings of presentation. I mean, they have their own press conference and still manage to get on Microsoft or Sony stage for a couple of minutes. They like to show big chunks of gameplay, impressive CGI trailers, and make a ton of promises. And look, I'm not here to talk about downgrades and all that, but I mean, yeah, all right, let's move on. Then, they continue their campaigns in big media outlets, such as IGN, GameSpot, Game Informer, and even through famous YouTubers. They share interviews, Q&As, brand new footage, and sometimes even behind the scenes, giving the consumers insight into the making of the game. But that's not the end of it. The next step is TV. Whether it's through TV spots, commercials, special events, or even talk shows, big publishers have the means to make sure that consumers never forget that the next installment in their favorite franchises is coming out soon. And they do so not only through the internet and its gaming communities, but through television and mainstream medias. This marketing strategy costs a ton of money, making it pretty much exclusive to publishing giants such as EA, Activision, Sony, Microsoft, and, well, Ubisoft. The good of that philosophy is obviously a financial one. And the bad is that oftentimes it generates fatigue. People get sick and tired of seeing ads for the same games over and over again. And worst case scenario, it can even convince some gamers that, well, they don't like the game even before playing it, because of the amount of footage they have already seen. Which brings us to the second philosophy, the more nuanced one. Quality based. Basically, it means that more doesn't always mean better. Quality based marketing usually embraces a more subtle approach. An approach that consists of intriguing the gaming community over a long period of time without completely leaving them in the dark. They like to tease the consumer with trailers and gameplay videos that show how the experience will look or feel like and not how it will actually play over a long period of time. One of the games that is currently trying this approach is the upcoming Vampire. This game developed by Donut Entertainment, the company behind Life is Strange, was first announced with a concept teaser in 2015. 
Then came E3 2016. They released a new in-engine trailer alongside a very carefully crafted 15 minutes long pre-alpha gameplay demo, introducing the characters and a couple of gameplay mechanics. Since the game would go mostly silent up until E3 2017, Dona released a CGI trailer in December 2016. This was obviously to remind people of the game's existence and to keep the excitement level up. Then for E3 2017, they released a new in-engine trailer, but most importantly had their first much longer gameplay presentation shown behind closed doors. A bit later, they released the footage online for people to see and presented some of it to outlets like IGN. But still, it wasn't playable on the show floor and was done in-house, meaning the footage was captured by the developers themselves in a very controlled environment. And recently, they started a very interesting web series highlighting key concepts and explaining the thought process behind every element of the game. For years, Rockstar Games have been doing a similar thing with their gameplay series videos, a tradition they started with Red Dead Redemption, kept on doing with L.A. Noire and Grand Theft Auto V and will most likely still do with Red Dead Redemption 2. As you can see, Don't Nod uses techniques and tools similar to Ubisoft but on a much smaller scale. Since they can't just throw all their stuff at once, they have to be more careful. Instead of releasing information like this, it's more like that. From concept to gameplay. The good of that philosophy is that even though you give the consumers content to chew on, they still have tons of surprises waiting for them since they've only seen a couple of minutes of gameplay. Thanks to quality-based marketing, publishers usually stay away from the fatigue caused by an overload of content, but can sometimes fall in the false advertising trap. So where does Death Stranding stand in all of this? Which brings us to the third and last marketing philosophy. Secrecy-based. As the name clearly states, this strategy is based on secrets and mysteries. The interesting thing about this philosophy is that advertisements are not used to sell a product, they sell an idea. Trailers for games or movies that fall in that category like to leave the viewers with questions instead of answers. A question mark is much stronger than a dot, and Kojima Productions are fully aware of that. The game was first revealed at E3 2016 through a very mysterious and strange teaser trailer. It revealed two things. Kojima was working on a brand new game and Norman Reedus was in it, making it the second collaboration between the two men. But other than that, not much was revealed. There was a naked guy stranded on a beach, a baby, whales, five silhouettes and alright, the title appeared. Okay. And when people thought we would finally have some answers, we were met with other questions. Through interviews, Kojima did give some answers. He explained key concepts, mechanics, the importance of connectivity, how death would be redefined, but still no actual plot. The trailers for Death Stranding are not publicity. Their goal is to intrigue, not to sell. They showcase a bunch of different characters and locations, but never truly explain the link between them. Most of the people who are anticipating the game are not excited for what it is, but for the answer it's finally going to give. This is where the game's marketing truly shines. And the fact that even though we are given information through promotional material, it's never enough to piece things together and to have a full grasp on what Kojima has to offer. And that's what makes this game interesting. You see, the riddle that Kojima is creating is the content. Death Stranding isn't anything at the moment, but trying to understand what it's about is actually fun. It's an experience in itself, there's a game before the game. And because it's such a confusing and complex puzzle, you can't really piece it together by yourself. You need other people, people who maybe saw in a trailer something you missed. This has to be the greatest strength of secrecy-based marketing. It creates a sense of community. Gamers are gathering around, they're interacting with each other, they're sharing their thoughts, they're engaging with the experience. Remember the last time you saw a really weird movie and talked about it for hours around some late night burgers with your friends? Well, Death Stranding recreates that feeling even before it's released. The trailers never actually try to sell a product, but because people are talking about it, the result is exactly the same. And that's genius. Hideo Kojima obviously isn't new to that type of marketing. One of the most brilliant marketing moves of all time has to be the way the now cancelled Silent Hills was revealed, through a little horror game called PT. The game was originally announced at Gamescom 2014, simply as a demo for an upcoming game. The studio behind it was a new one and the creators were unknown. The game, although simple, was incredibly cryptic. 
To finish the game, you had to accomplish a series of vague tasks and most players had to go online to learn how to complete it. But once you completed it, you were rewarded with this. The best reveal ever. Unfortunately, the game was cancelled. But Kojima is back and he's approaching the marketing of his next game in a very similar fashion by creating a mystery that heavily involves community dialogue. Whether Death Stranding will stay on that route or not is a fairly irrelevant question in my opinion, because it already accomplished what it had to. It introduced us to a new world, new characters, new themes in a very brilliant manner. The consumer is already participating in something bigger, giving a much greater meaning to the product itself. Kojima said numerous times that Death Stranding will be about connection, about how people interact with each other. And I think that by solely looking at the philosophy behind the game's marketing, we can safely say that he already succeeded. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed that fairly different video. Um, it was quite a challenge to write this one, but it was real interesting to look at an aspect of gaming I don't usually pay attention to. I'm currently playing Celeste, I'm having a ton of fun so my next video will most likely be about that. But I also recently finished a very interesting experience called Stories Untold, so just keep an eye on that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.